little bit of clean in there. Get the corrosion off of there. Any, any that might be in there. Just make it easier on yourself. Okay. Much to it. ball joint. Alright. There it is. So it goes up like this. Underneath. Like that. Now, if I remember correctly, I think I started this with a flat plate on top just to get it started and get it going. Uh, I want my middle size it's perfect. It fits right in there like that. That's what you want. It goes around the boot, but sits on that ledge. You can use it to push it up. Use the same, same adapter that did before. Stick it in there like that. Now on top, I believe I used my other plate to start. I think I used this to start. It's got a little bit of concave, so it's got some... I can't push it all the way to this, but I can start it. It makes it easier to start it. And then I'll finish it with a, uh, a, my smallest adapter on top. Once I find out what I did with my, uh, my arm here. So, take this. There's no, there's no mark on this for the inner outer, uh, unless it's that. I don't think that's it, but I'm going to put that to the, in case that is, a little bump there. I'm going to put that to the inside uh, of the car, away from the brakes got a mark on it there so it might be doesn't really say much about it but sometimes they're marked I'm gonna assume that's the mark if it's not it doesn't matter uh, yeah this way plate on top here just to start it get it started let's see how much room I have I think I had just enough room to do this I think just enough we'll see in a second yeah, I did. Get my, make sure my ball joints lined up in the hole. Oh, this is gonna be. I gotta move that slightly. Now I'm just screwing this up here. All right. Looks good. Ah, uh, that's what happens sometimes. You do want to get it started correctly. You don't want to get it started crooked. If you think it's going crooked on you a little bit and you're doing this with a gun, just take the uh, gun off and smack the end of this with a hammer. And a lot of times that shock will just line it right back up and it'll just straighten it out. It's in there right. Sorry, it looked like it was. Let's let's get it. Alright, it's definitely starting. I don't know if you hear it. You can hear it popping, pulling it up into the into the uh, arm. Just exactly what I want to hear, kinda. I want to just go in there. Right, so you can see it started. It looks good. That goes around it. So now, see, I can tell that it goes around it because this kind of seats around it like that. Put my, my plate on here. I think that'll give me enough room. Well, it will because I, I did on the other side. So. Come on. Come on. Oh, there it goes. 
there it goes. We need just enough room. Just, just enough room to get in there. Then again, that's all you need. It's just enough room. There we go. Now, now we're looking better. All right, let's try that. against that underneath here it's flush up against it all the way around so that means it's all the way in so it's it's where it should be you want to make sure it gets all the way in it, as I said it's almost impossible for me to show you that and make any sense of it but it's right up against it that that ledge this this ledge is right up against the arm uh, there's no gap now I'll put the new snap ring in here and we'll put uh, Oh, my, my hole's facing sideways, too. I always try to line these holes up so they're not directly in and out where it's going to be tough to get at it. Side to side for the cotter pin hole. Do that before you put it together. I actually remember this time. A lot of times I, don't, I forget and it goes to grief. Get the snap ring going here. Watch these things like a take off, so... I say that went right in there, which is good. I'm just gonna spin it a little bit, make sure it's seated all the way. I have them facing in, so it's a little easier to get to. I put my uh, Zerk fitting in there, and when you put the Zerk fitting, put it in a direction you can get the grease gun to it. I like to put them facing the back, slightly in. It just makes it easier to get up, get at them. You put it, you know, facing right at the spindle, you're never gonna get a grease gun on it. I like greasable ball joints. Uh, if you grease them, they actually, I think they actually last a lot longer. I think that's 10 millimeter. Let me go get a 10 millimeter. Uh, I'm gonna clean, obviously I'm gonna clean this. I'm gonna clean the hole down here. And we're gonna start putting this back together. The good thing about the grease leaking out of the bottom one was it's it's not really corroded, it's just uh, greasy. Just clean that off. Alright, let's see if we can get this back together. <clears throat> see how much fun that'll be. I'll get my axe spindle nut ready. And my <clears throat> bottom. And I can undo my bolt here and get that ready for the top. Now let the magic show begin. If I can get this bottom started on here, just enough to get it started. Come on. I got it, I got it started. Got it turned on there a little bit. Good. That'll make it a lot easier to get that in there. Get that out of the way. If I remember correctly, this will go, but it's tight. You got to turn it to the side. This, I don't, it's just, I can't do anything about it. I'm going to leave it right where it is. I think it's the end, very end of this uh, seal. It's already corroded. Uh, the bearing's good, but it's corroded. There's not much I can do about it. I don't know I want to replace the whole thing, which I don't, because it's done, not having a problem. It's just dry rotted. Now I've got that lined up. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, you know what? Uh, do yourself a favor. Put some anti-seize on that before you put it together. Always a good idea. This makes it easier for whoever's got to get in here next so the axle doesn't hang up in the bearing, in the splines. Try to keep it off yourself. You won't, but you, you can try. It gets all over you. Not on the threads, just on the splines. You know, have some thought for the next person, whether it's you or not, that has to be in there. It's always a good idea. Okay. 
put in there. Hopefully you're still saying this. Yeah, I think you are. Oh man, that... Oh, what's going on with that? That, that went in the first time. I mean, it does that. All right, I'll just spin that on. So now I've got the bottom on. Bottom ball joint started. Uh, I've got the, the spindle uh, axle nut started. Now, this, if I remember right, was the hard part. You've got to push this down. Push this arm down and get it into there because this what happens is this bolt goes through here and it sits in that groove. It sits, you probably can't see it because the light's so bad. But it sits in that groove like that. And that's what holds it in place through here. All right, I've got this started. I don't know how, well, my light's terrible. I'm, I'm just struggling because I'm missing a light tonight. This one, I wish I had something else to put it on. Uh, let me see if I can find something better to put that on. Maybe make it Well, that might, look, that might be better, but I'll go right in front of it and block a light. What I'm going to do is push this arm down, line this groove up in the ball joint, and uh, put the bolt through. The whole, once I get the bolt through, it will stay put. Usually you have to tap it in with a hammer, but this has got to go all the way down. Usually you take a, a... Don't beat on this. I'm just going to tap it. If you have it lined up, it'll go through. See? Just bad thing. Went through. And put the nut back on. Selfie. Just get it started. Let me move this light now for you. The light from both sides. That's a little better. All right. This is uh, 40, 40 foot pounds, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on these. I believe it's 40, uh, 90 for the ball joint. Got 55 for the tie rod end, and um, is that right? 50 for the tie rod end. 50, 90, 180. It's, it's, a, it's a big range. I try to hit the middle of it. 180 for this. Um, I think it's I think 40 for that, if I remember correctly. So let's just start sticking everything back together. That, that actually went better, better than I thought it was going to go. Usually it gets more grief than that. Clean that off. Start torquing everything down. I even got the. I even got that where I can get. Let me grease that. No, let me tighten that bottom. No, I'm just talking to myself. Just ignore me. Uh, get that back in and down. It's my uh, my nut for that. I believe that's it. Yeah. Where's my hole for that? Okay, so that's reachable. Is that the right one? I don't know. I don't know if it's the right one or not. Yeah, it's the right one. Start it on there. I'm not gonna crank down on this. I'm just gonna run it in so I don't have to do it all by hand. Started. Uh, we get the box started. Should be at 24. Same thing. I'm not going to crank it up. I'm just going to. So I don't have to do it all by hand. There's not much to go here. Okay. Let me get this one. Get that back. Put back together. Uh, where's my 15? 15. 15. 15. Yep. I don't, I don't know why I do that. I have a gun right with me. An air gun. I just like to make it as hard as I possibly can. It's not hard enough most of the time. Okay. That's not tight, but I'm going to torque them. Like I said, I'm going to torque them. Uh, I run my axle nut in. Same thing. I don't want to crank on it. I just want to run it in until I, until I don't take up the space. Up, that's it. We'll finish torquing that. Um, let me get a torque wrench. 
torque these three and put cotter pins in the tie rod end and the ball joint. Huge cotter pin box full of cotter pins. Probably, things probably older than I am. I like to go to auctions, find that stuff at auctions and buy it for almost nothing. And it saves, saves a lot of money. There's 40. That's it. That's what it said. 40. That's what it gets. This one's about um, 55.60. That's what it says. So I usually do it a little low because you got to align the, the uh, castle nut, get the cotter pin, and you usually have to turn it. You don't want to back it off. You want to turn it in, turn it in more. So I'm going to do, uh, I'll do 50, and then we'll probably go a little more. Just for fun. Not really for fun, but let me see where my uh, let me see where my hole is here. Okay, I see it. Hopefully, you can see that. Let me move my light again. That side. Trying to get you decent light. Trying. Always a battle. That one's already, let me back that off. It was already in there. I did not think I put it that tight, but I guess I did, so I definitely want to retort that. Just loosen that up, basically. Let me do that one. That's why I tend to go a little bit low, not real low, but maybe five pounds low. And, it, and I probably end up going over when you have to turn it that much. It makes a huge difference. All right, I'm lined up on that hole. I'm get my bottom one at 90, 90, uh, 90 foot pounds. Right there. Hole is pointing straight to the side. Lined up. Done with this one. A bigger torque wrench for this axle nut. Alright. You gave me a cotter pin with this. Half the time I don't end up using them because I don't like what they give you, but we'll see. I don't remember on this one. Yeah, that was small. Small. A lot of people stick them in this way. I don't like that because that ends up going like this. When you do that, it ends up going in here like this. Then when you got to get them out, and it's a real, it's tough to get them out. I, I try to turn them sideways and keep them sideways so they don't go all the way in, so they stick out like that. And then they're just e if you have to get them out of there, they're easier. Also, there's a long side. I point that away from whatever you know whatever's close to it, so you can get a hold of it better. I stick that in there like that. Now this one, see, see, I don't like it. it's too small for me. I, I like a bigger cotter pin. Because I know if I had to get back in there and it's small like that, they're a pain. I don't like the mess with them. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. Something, something bigger. 
do that one. Mm-hmm. I like that better. This way. That's better. Can't disappear on me. Uh, pair of no, not that. Where am I? Pair of cutters. Grab a hold of it. Bend it around. Not going to the moon here. Don't, don't get too too uh, crazy. We're worried about it. Just don't want it to come out. Okay. One for there. Probably use the one that they sent me. The ball joint here. I know you can't say it, but it's not a big deal. It's too big for this, though. Actually, I gotta go. I gotta go a little further. It's not lined up. It's not quite lined up. two are done uh, I'm gonna put the brakes back on here obviously I'm not gonna show that bolt the bracket back on push your piston in a little bit put your caliper back on your rotor caliper back on uh, and then when I put this back on the ground uh, I'm gonna tighten this torque this axle nut. I'll show you that but I'm not gonna show you the brakes just brakes I mean there's tons of videos for brakes out there. there's probably tons of videos for this too but um, not too bad actually not too bad at all. Um, alignment. This is getting alignment. Anytime I get in here and break this stuff loose, replace ball joint, do stuff like that, at least get the alignment checked. Uh, I'm going to get an alignment done, but that's that's about it for, for replacing the lower ball joint on this. Not bad at all. One of the easier ones. Some of them are really hard, but this one was not bad at all. Brakes are back together. Don't forget your bolt and your uh, ABS sensor. Bolt that back where it's supposed to be. Right on the back of the Bingo here. Come on. Put your clips back. Put your uh, line your uh, wire back up with these holder clips. They have a groove in them. They have a groove that fits right in this in the clip. Put that groove back in there. Clip back on. There's one. Two. All right, put the wheel back on. Maybe four. I'm going to be right away because I'm certainly not going to pull up on this thing and fight it. That's it, 2001 Explorer Sport Track. Lower ball joints, pretty easy. Not bad at all. Maybe 45 minutes an hour aside uh, total. Not, not too bad. Uh, if you have to do this for your uh, vehicle, I hope it helps you out. If you like the videos, subscribe below. Thanks for watching.